Oh boy. Well, welcome to the auto show. It is the 2017 Los Angeles Auto Show. Now, for those of you uh, that saw my previous video, part one, I'm just going to do a quick run through of this haul uh, so we're not going over it several times. But yeah, Coriel, you're the nice one, man. You're the only, only one here right now. But anyway, we're going to get started right away. Uh, so you can see I'm over in the Honda booth here in the Honda and Mitsubishi area. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of what we got here. So we're looking at the Honda Civic Type R, which, by the way, definitely the most impressive thing from Honda right now. Uh, they have 306 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. They're, uh, they're genuinely a pretty awesome little car, man. I, I think they're pretty, pretty cool little setup right there. Six-speed manual transmission. They're, uh, they're pretty awesome. So, yeah, no complaints there. Looks like Honda's still kind of doing the Honda thing. They're doing a good job. They got some neat stuff set up. They brought uh, an Indy car, the Dakar car from Mitsubishi is here so a number of of neat things over here in this side of the show but let's go ahead and get started I'm going to start walking around a little bit so moving on you can see the new Wrangler right here not bad this is the new Rubicon who uh, I actually the guy that did some of the modifications of this John Williams it's based out of Salt Lake. I work with him periodically at uh, the Ford Racing School. I like that they have that top, the safari top that kind of rolls back, so that's kind of neat. Definitely some cool stuff on the new Wrangler. Looks like a two-liter turbo engine. Uh, and then, of course, you have Dodge here. They've got the Demon all the way in the back over there. That was about the only thing I was excited about. And then make our way. Oh, there's Fiat. they got the 124 Spiders here, which are kind of cool. The new Wrangler again, that fold down windshield. And I do kind of, I have to admit, I kind of like the hole in the door. Although, admittedly, I'd sort of just rather take the door off. But, uh, and then the rest, you know, you got Chrysler brought the fleet of minivans and one 300. <laughs> Ram brought a bunch of trucks and some vans. Ford put a GT on the wall, which I thought was kind of cool. And, uh, they brought a bunch of stuff actually as well. So the Ford booth is pretty wild. That thing over in the corner is hilarious. The red space, you gotta look that thing up in my other video. It's priceless if you haven't seen it. It is just, I, uh, I wanna be nice, but I can't be. It's just, well, it's just an atrocious little thing back there. Look at, just just see the, the windshields all slanted in the front and it's just a terrible vehicle. <laughs> but somebody will buy it. So you got the GT350s, the Focus RS, Ford even brought some uh, cutaway NASCARs, which I thought was really neat. They've got the trucks over in the corner there, a little turbo or uh, differential setup for the RS there. Got a GT, of course. Here's the cutaway of the NASCAR, which I thought was pretty cool. Kind of see how they build it, what they do. Pretty neat stuff. The GT with the throwback livery, love that. And, of course, a spokes model there talking about it, which was hilarious. And then, of course, we're up here <laughs> hitting the front of Ford. Looks like they got the, is that the new Expedition Explorer? I have no idea what that is. But they got some neat stuff up here. Nissan did a bunch of Star Wars crap. They brought a bunch of Star Wars stuff. And they released the new Kicks, which evidently, you know, it's supposed to be kind of neat. I could really care less, but whatever. There's some of the... Star Wars crap from Nissan. I wish Nissan would actually just put as much put, put as much effort I wish Nissan would put as much effort into actually making a car that people wanted as they do into marketing. Feels like they're going the way of Apple in that they just want to make something ridiculous. They just want to make something awesome so that it gets purchased instead of actually making a vehicle people want. So they're, they're going the way of the bean counters. Uh, and then here we go. We got Kia doing some neat stuff. That new Stinger I did the event not too long ago for. Those are pretty sharp looking vehicles. I will say, I really, really do like the new look of the, or the look of the new Stinger rather. It's a good looking car. So, that being said, that is the front of the auto show here. So I'm going to go ahead and walk over to the other side and show you guys everything that we see along the way. So I'm on a break, I'm in a little bit of a hurry here because I want to get back and don't want to leave the guys hanging out front at the Mercedes Iron Shekel. But we got an off-road electric vehicle, check this thing out. Bollinger. 
pass through all the way to the back, which I thought was neat. The front bed. <laughs> I went over this a little bit the other day. But you can see it's it's pretty cool, man. Kind of I like the Defender style fold down seats there. So kind of a neat deal there. That's Bollinger Motors. You can check them out in more detail. Slingshot has a big presence here. They've got a, a demo outside where they're basically doing a ride along, and you get to go out and do a little bit of drifting and donuts and you know whatever. It's uh, kind of like what we're doing with Mercedes, except there's actually some drifting and burning tires involved. Uh, so Saline has a big presence here at the show. These giant banners. They brought an S7, which is one of my favorite cars ever. Love these things. The S7. Such beautiful cars. They won so many races. They were just incredible. In fact, that was what Bruce Almighty drove in. <laughs> That's what uh, in that movie actually. So the Saline S1, the Saline One, really. Sharp little car, they just released it. Pretty pretty neat, I thought. 450 horsepower, a two and a half liter turbo, about 2,700 pounds, two seater mid engine, uh, roughly $100,000. So it's, uh, I mean, granted, I'm not buying one anytime soon, but it is a relatively affordable, fun car. And, uh, and that's kind of rare these days. So here's what we're looking at up front. We've got a bunch of uh, nothing <laughs> up in the front booth. Uh, this is the main entrance up here, and then of course you can kind of cruise to the back, which is where we're going to head right now. So, One of the trends that I've noticed so far at this show, uh, it is really a lot about plug-in hybrids. It seems like because of all the benefits, the, the huge cuts that the government, the tax breaks the government are giving out right now, uh, everybody's making a plug-in hybrid. Honda, Mitsubishi, I know Toyota has the Prius Prime. Um, God, there was like two companies that made just a plug-in hybrid. So um, moving on from that, we have looks like a pretty baller Raptor there in the front. Looks like Forza has a pretty big setup. They brought a couple Porsches and a Raptor. You can come play Forza, uh, which is kind of cool. The Galpin Customs Auto Hall. I guess that's not open right now. Maybe it will be on the way back through. So... Well, anyway, we're walking on over to the other side of the hall, so let's see what else is here. So, I have the, oh, the Mark IV. That's cool. I haven't seen this thing in a long time. This thing is wild. Check it out. Four V8s, because it's America, and one is never enough. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the ingenuity of people that do things like that. It's amazing. Let's go to the Galpin Autosports Hall here. So we have all kinds of custom stuff from gas. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Mad Mike the other day. He came over and checked out the uh, checked out the iron shekel that I was driving on, so I got to chat with him. Uh, super down-to-earth guy. He's kind of one of the head dudes at Galpin, and they do a lot of customs. Um, Anyway, you can see there's just a ton of really neat stuff here. There's a Type R that's already modified. That's pretty wild. Jay Leno's garage. So this must be the film vehicle for Jay Leno. Got a Raptor in here. Gorgeous Raptor. That looks like JR's Mustang. Yep, yeah, that is. That's the RTR. So the RTR Spec 5, customized by Galvin Autosports. It's a good-looking Mustang. It's got that over fender look which is real popular right now not so sure i'm a big fan of it but uh you know teach their own i guess We've got some really neat stuff in here the gt which is uh hard not to like it is a beautiful car although admittedly i do think that i'm more impressed by the gt350 than i am by the ford gt just from the price like that thing 340,000 or whatever the heck they are it should be it should be amazing. It better be as fast as a 458. So I'm not really as impressed as I am by like the GT350, which I find much more impressive just because of the price. The Focus RS played around with. There's JR's ultimate fun haver, I guess. The RTR F150. Got an Aston Martin in the corner. Bunch of stuff in the middle. I like that flat, uh, flat or matte. Oh, it's like matte pearl. That's really cool if you can see it. It's a matte pearl color on that Aston. Beautiful cars. Of course, 
It's hard not to like Aston's, right? It's hard. I think everybody would pretty much agree that Aston's are some of the most beautiful cars ever. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's a stunning, the Vanquish. Oh my God, beautiful car. Although my phone is not doing it justice with all the blue light here. So we got a Jaguar in here. They've got old school Camaro. All right, loving that. It's a DJ in here, why not? Got a Lotus, another Jaguar, the Porsche GT. Old school trucks. That's some really, really neat stuff. Henry Jaded, that's awesome. <laughs> pinstriping. Man, pinstriping really is an art. There's the RWB that everybody's been excited about. I've actually never seen one in person. And it is a beautiful car. I will say, I think that uh, the RWB style is at this point it's a little bit like it's been done um but it is gorgeous i like those cars a lot whoa okay <laughs> uh, i love stuff like that it has a front end and uh front end of a forklift and three superchargers on it that's one of those why not moments so there's all kinds of stuff out here i'm kind of walking by some of the custom stuff here uh, anyway, that was the Galpin Autosports Custom Hall there. That got some neat stuff in there. Let's keep on going. The original Maverick funny car. Man, 1966. That thing set all kinds of records. That's pretty wild. So we're carrying on here. Hornady's 97 NASCAR. <laughs> 410 horsepower in 1963. That's absurd, by the way. Definitely not something that you see from everything. That's almost as much horsepower as the G-Wagon has, and that's got a twin-turbo, <laughs> bi-turbo, technically, uh, four-liter V8. It's pretty wild stuff that did that back in 1963. And a motor that did it just ran at the limit for hours. It's crazy the amount of engineering that went in to get it done. Now they got computers, and they got people, you know, monitoring these things, figuring out how to do it. Oh, God. It's incredible, man. That was over 50 years ago. Here we go. Look at this, the Speedster Evolution concept. No windshield, <laughs> I don't think it has a roof. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Let's bring your goggles. Oh, the Spider, I saw that last year. Same thing, MS5, MX-5 Spider concept. Couple cool little cars there. So. Those are the sort of things you get to see when, when you're here. The concept cars are always fun to see. Even though it's not like necessarily crazy, like a spider or a bikini top or whatever, it's not necessarily going like, to change the game, so to speak. But uh, it is kind of cool to see people throwing things like that. The Art Center College of Design, designing some cars and stuff. All right. And here's the second hall. I'm going <laughs> to slide down this. Watch me get hurt. That would be hilarious. All right, cool. And then, so here we go. We're down in the second the hall here. Gets a brand new Xbox. There it is. Second oh, the I thirty. Gets nice. A that's gift sweet, card. dude. Whose car Third is that? Place, gets a brand new Bluetooth headset. Fourth through ninth. So they're doing get some. Get to have. Doing some challenges. So they always have thing. some weird stuff. Really? If you can't Arkimoto. I don't know what this is. That thing looks. I would not want to drive that in traffic. If you value your life, you don't drive that in Los Angeles traffic. So the Aria FX3, people have been talking about that thing quite a bit. Oh, excuse me. Bad. Pretty wild. 6.2 liter supercharged V8. We got some more Lexus RCs over there. We haven't even. <laughs> By the way, we haven't even gotten into the hall yet. We're still in the entryway, so I'm going to make it uh, into the second hall here in just a moment. But Prestone brought some neat stuff this year. Look at this thing. This is nasty, evidently. And a Yo. bunch of cross and stuff. But How long do I got to sit in the detention center if I take a picture by it? Beautiful car. 
And of course, you got the Pantera classics. These are pretty awesome, right? Just checking it. And they've got some exotics. So we got some Ferraris, and Lambos, the SLS, McLaren. Not quite a McLaren, I wish. Too bad there's not a McLaren there. Anyhow, you got some uh, some neat stuff. The Murcielago, that's what I was going for, not McLaren. Good Lord. The M words. All right, so we've kind of seen the entryway here. Let's give you another quick look around. You can sort of see the entryway in the convention center here. There's all sorts of stuff here. But now, we're going to head up to the South Hall. So this is where the uh, other half, maybe two-thirds of the convention show actually takes place. What time is it right now? 12 12. All right. So we're going to head into Hall H, Hall J, Hall K, basically all the halls. And we're going to check all of them out here, so let's do this. I'm going to change hands real quick. All right. So here's Audi. Let's take a look at Audi. So it looks like they brought an R8 Spider. The V10 even, nice. I like that. It's a flat pearl as well. Evidently that's kind of a popular color these days. RS5, RS7, so they brought some RS's. Two V10s for the R8s. Beautiful cars. But nothing that I'm, you know, losing my brain over here, so. Anyhow, there was the Audi booth. Let's see, we've got a Denali up on jack stands for some reason, so you can look underneath it. This is the kind of stuff you see, like these displays. <laughs> this is like jack the truck up. And you can look underneath it and go like, wow, look, there's the particulate filter. And there's, there's the DEF fluid. For some reason, they mounted maybe a transmission cooler midship for some reason. So some of those demonstrations are always kind of fun. You get to see some somebody gets a unique idea and does it. So Acura, they've got the, of course they're going to have the NSX here. That's really the only thing I care to see. You know, I mean the MDX, I will say, has made a lot of progress, but I kind of don't care. And frankly, I think if you're watching my channel, you probably don't care about the MDX either. But so they brought their Le Mans car, the North American Endurance Corp. So I'll probably see that in Daytona in a few weeks, maybe a month or whatever that is when I get down there. And of course they brought the NSX, which really is a beautiful vehicle. They did a really good job. Although I will say I think it's a little bit too expensive for uh, that particular market. Oh, here's a red one. I love that color. Look at that. The vehicle is locked, except for that side. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Oh, and I have the uh, the full carbon one too. This thing is badass. Damn, damn! Check that out. <laughs> oh, this is NSX. <laughs> yeah, the full carbon one. GT3. Oh man, that thing is gorgeous. Look at that. I want to get a shot of the inside. I don't know if you guys can see it well, but we got the full race interior. The dash is carbon fiber. Man, I'm surprised they didn't inverse mount the wing and mount it from the top. That seems to be pretty popular in the uh, GT3 world these days. Oh, there you go. Starting at 465,000 euro. Enter sweepstakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. All I want you to do is put your information in so they can send you emails and crap. So that's why we all should have a fake email address so that you can send it to me and give them that email. Mine is, uh, is just a web, it literally has web crap in the address, which I find funny. All right, so Infinity. Let's see. I'm still waiting for them to put the GTR motor in a Q50 like they've been talking about for a long time. But, you know, Alpha's here. Cadillac is here. I guess we'll make our way back that way here in a moment. Infinity, nothing really jumping out at me right now. Granted, I'm just doing a quick gloss over this one. By the way, if you guys want to see anything, let me know. 
try and make it to wherever you want. If you're watching this, thank you. If you're watching this, thank you very much. You guys are the best. Let me know if there's something that you would like to see. All three of you, you guys get like a private tour. All right, here we go. Turning the camera back around. Buick. Honest question, do any of you care at all about Buick? I really don't. I know they tried to kind of rebrand themselves a while ago, but I really couldn't. The Toyota Tercel four-wheel drive. I can make my way over there. I'm sure it's in the, uh, it's probably going to be in the Toyota booth. <laughs> would be a safe bet. Let's see what Volvo's got real quick. I'll make my way over to Toyota here shortly. How's that? They're good. Yeah. All right, so the V60. Volvo's got, that's kind of a cool booth, actually. I got a car up above the office. So let's see what they got here. You know, I'm gonna venture, I'm gonna venture a guess and assume that Volvo's probably just gonna say they're really proud of their safety innovations and remind us that they uh, invented the three-point seat belt <laughs> and a bunch of other things. Um, anyway, here's Alpha, which we walked by earlier, and they don't have a. I don't think they have a. Is that a spider back in the corner? It might be a spider. Ooh, I don't know. I haven't been to the Mazda booth yet. All right, so you're giving me some good stuff. So I got to check out Mazda and I got to check out uh, Toyota. See that Toyota Tercel four-wheel drive? There's the Spider. That's really the only thing I care about from Alpha. Rode in one on, uh, actually, rode in one on, on the Rally North America last year. It's pretty awesome. Rob's Alpha. Love those little things. Those things are pretty awesome. Proper little supercar in their own right. And Cadillac. And a little ATS right there. We'll make our way over there here in a little bit. Oh boy, look at This is what happens if you've never been to an auto show and you get people like poor, those poor product specialists. <laughs> oh, you're making a bad joke? All right, I see how it is. Put me on the spot, huh? Anyway, those poor product specialists have to know all that knowledge and then just recite that same speech all day, which is kind of what I have to do, but at least I'm driving something fun. Here, I was getting excited. I wanted to see a Toyota Tercel four-wheel drive, man. That would have been hysterical. <laughs> All right, so the Mercedes booth, which I haven't been to yet, but I have been reminded countless times by the lady running this thing uh, about <laughs> how she is in charge of the Mercedes booth, even though I'm not working at the Mercedes booth or for the Mercedes booth. But anyway, here's the Mercedes booth. This is the Project One that everybody, as you can see, has been very excited about. Let's go get a closer look. The AMG Project One, Formula One technology for the road. So 1.6 liter engine, 1,000 horsepower, 25 kilometer drive range with electric. That's pretty wild. So yeah, that thing is pretty crazy. The front end looks just bonkers. When you see this thing coming at you, look at that. <laughs> That's just mean, right? Oh man, that is gorgeous. I know technically I'm uh, working for Mercedes while I'm here, but I have to tell you, I do really like the stuff that they do. I think they make an excellent car. Maybe not the most reliable, and it has a horrible resale value, but they are pretty awesome cars. So here's an AMG GT. Looks like a GT3 model, GT2, I can't tell. Anyway, little race car. Brought some of their other stuff, the Gs, the GLKs. Nothing here, uh, GLC, you know, whatever. At this point, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> At this point, it's just more Mercedes, you know. They do some cool stuff, but most of it is shit that I just couldn't care like less about. The, the CLS Coupe uh, Edition 1 is kind of neat. Saw something about this the other day. It's got that gorgeous white paint job I'm a big fan of, Deep Luster. That is actually a really, really sweet car. I got to play with one of those not too long ago uh, up in North Hollywood. So check that thing out. Yeah, man, the CLS 450, the Edition 1. Is pretty neat. It's kind of a grand touring design almost, but it does have a trunk. Uh, and then we've got Lexus. So I bet you, uh, my buddy Jeff back home will love this, the GSF. It's too bad they don't make, really wish the GSF would have been actually cooler. <laughs> yeah, 85 grand, 
But let's see, colors, gallery, summary. I don't really care about the colors. Let's see what horsepower. Summary? Five liter V8. Oh, okay, that's different. Wow. All right, so the GSF is legit. I stand corrected. The GSF is 467 horsepower. Okay, cool. Evidently, I have been out of touch on the Lexus stuff for a while. Of course, the uh, IMSA car, the RC that they used to run in IMSA, it's pretty neat. Always cool to see race cars. That's really the technology I like. In fact, I kind of wish I was at the PRI show this weekend, but unfortunately, I'm not. The LS500, I did the launch event for these cars. Um, we were up in North, uh, Northern California, up in the Bay Area, and it was pretty awesome. So they have the executive suite, and that back chair actually like folds all the way forward and moves up, and then there's a recliner on the back seat, and it raises all the way forward. So you have like a rec full-on recliner in the back seat, which is pretty awesome. So uh, they're doing some cool stuff, and of course, you know the car everybody really comes to Lexus to see, which is. The, well, these, the RCF is obviously a pretty cool car. And of course you have the LC. Summary, the RCF, 467 horsepower. This thing is a blast, I bet. And then you have, of course, the LC. So this is the one that everybody pretty much comes to see. Still, uh, still feels like a Lexus in there. I love that they're going back to that dash-mounted mode selector. They're really proud of that, like up on the dash right there, that selector from the original LS. They've been really, really proud of that. It was something we had to hype up a ton of while I was in San Francisco doing that event. All right, so we've seen Volvo, we've seen Mercedes, we've seen Lexus. We've seen, oh boy, we've seen Buick. Oh, there you go. That's something you'll see only at a trade show. Let's just hack this car in half. That's pretty cool to see. Look at that. Yeah. I'm definitely, I think I'm more impressed with the fabrication it took to make that than with the actual car. <laughs> but anyway, so we're over here at Maserati now. Maserati again. Great car to buy if you want something that sounds incredible. Not a great car to buy if you want something that's going to be reliable. But they do make a very beautiful car, and they sound amazing. Even the new Ghibli sounds pretty good, and it's not really a real aggressive car. So Beamer, looks like they've got a race car up top there. Let's see. Yeah, I'd agree with you, man. I think uh, the LFA is a great car, and that's actually like a supercar you could drive every day. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm a fan. I don't know how to get my stupid things to go away. How many people wanted to visit the Buick birth booth versus how many just needed to walk through to get somewhere better? I, Greg, that might be a good point. They may actually have, they may actually have a really good placement just people walking through to get them. So here we are, BMW. I still think that ultimate driving machine claim is, is uh, hilarious, but the M5, the F10 M5, beautiful car. They brought one, oh boy. I've got, it uh, looks like some sort of special version M4. And can I also just, you guys mind if I squeeze behind you? Thanks, man, appreciate it. So the M4, cancel. Let's go back. So there you go, M4 Coupe, 3.90 to 60. Not bad. They are pretty. But can I just say that I find it really frustrating that the M4 is a two-door and the M3 is a four-door. I, I never understood that decision, but maybe somebody here can enlighten me on that. But anyway, I think it's funny because they missed an opportunity. You had the M4, would have been four doors. Uh, I and the M3 has always been two doors except for the E92 when they started making it four doors. So it started out, the M3's heritage was a two-door coupe. It always was, the E30 M3. I don't know, whatever. I don't make those decisions, but anyhow. Back to it. So you got the M6 here, which is just, oh, missed it there. The M6 here, which is really just kind of a boat. Um, and then, what else do we got here? Beamer, Beamer always does have some pretty, uh, pretty good stuff, I would say. Let's see, reset. Yes, reset. I want to see what I'm looking at here. View model. M models, the M2. So this is kind of like 
the modern day E30 M3, like real straightforward. They did bring a, a automatic DSG, whatever they want to call it. Oh, there's that self-balancing motorcycle or whatever they have. Uh, but they make a six-speed in this, which would be a blast to drive. The M40i, X6M. So M is really what I cared to see, right? There's one of the old IMSA cars up there, which is kind of cool. I like that they bring that stuff. The i3 is kind of a neat car. Um, I've driven them. It's kind of zippy. Uh, it's just weird. Like the whole interior is made of like as much of it is made of like bamboo and natural materials and stuff, which I don't know, kind of cool. I get their market, but that's not really for people like us. Um, so as you can see, just uh, the i8 is about the only other thing I would care to see in here. There's an M3. Um, yeah, the i8. Pretty, pretty sharp looking car still, but I think everybody's seen them. Moving on over to Caddy. So the Caddy V, the ATSV. Got a couple ATSVs here and the CTSV, which is pretty awesome. So the ATSV is kind of a cool car. Ooh, they brought a manual too. Nice. I would like to try one of those things. I think that would be pretty sharp, pretty fun handling little cars. And then of course you got the CTSV as well. So hard to. Uh, Hard to hate on an American company that's doing some cool stuff. So I'll, I'll give it up to Cadillac. They still make some boring shit, but I do like that they're they're making the effort. And then Greg Huff is going to be loving this one. On to Mini. So as you can see, they have a Ford. Can I just say, I'm sorry, Greg. I just don't like the Mini brand, really. Like, the little cars, like the smaller ones, like the Mini Cooper S is good, but I can't stand like the Clubman. Like, what is this horse shit? There's nothing miniature about four doors, and I hate that your brand name is Mini, and yet you have four doors. Like, the Clubman, it's huge. Where's the Clubman? I know it's here somewhere. Hang on, I'm gonna find it. I was like, the little one like that Greg has, like, those are fun. Those are what a Mini should be, but then look at, look at this. This thing is massive. And here you go. Here's another one. There's a <laughs> there's a full-grown man in the back seat of a Mini, okay? None of what I just shed, said is Mini at all. Full-grown man, back seat, Mini. None of that makes any sense at all. I never have understood that. But anyway, Mini's making some stuff. Looks like they brought the autocross champion. Oh, look, another plug-in hybrid. Like I said, those are everywhere. And they brought uh, the Mini Electric Concept. So there you go. Mini made an electric car too. And they're probably never going to make it. <laughs> but anyway, there you have it. I want to see... I just, oh my god, I can't stand that. The GP concept? I'm not sure what that is, Greg. Uh, I don't know what the GP concept is, but I'll look around and see. I don't see anything. I see the plug-in hybrid, which, you know, it plugs into a wall, yippee. Uh, although I have to admit, I do think the idea of being able to drive like 20 miles without using any gas is kind of nice. So I'm not anti-plug-in hybrid. Like their answer to the Civic Type R, I highly doubt that's here, dude. Uh, it's probably, you might see it in Chicago if they announce it, but yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, all I see is gigantic, bulky cars named Minis. <laughs> all right, anyway, moving on. So let's see. We're over at Chevy now. Oh, the Chevy Volt is still a thing. Okay. I drove one of those. Uh, it's kind of nice. You don't have a lot of power, but you do have power immediately, which is nice. And then you have the, the Bolt. I can I? Why do you have the Volt? and the Bolt. I think having both of those names is, is really confusing. But anyway, here's the Bolt, the EV. So they have a Bolt, they have a, I guess the Volt, the Volt is not a, damn it, not a plug-in hybrid. There's a, the Bolt is a plug-in electric, you know. GM finally did it. I don't even know what this is. Okay. So this is, this is testing out computers. Super, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, well, so the Chevy Traverse, of course, they put at the front of the booth, because why wouldn't you? That's what everybody's here to see. Notice there's, like, nobody around it. <laughs> All right, let's go see what uh, what Chevy brought at the back. Okay. Oh, well, there we go, the ZR2, Colorado. Ooh, the, the little Duramax, that's right. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah. I'm cool with, with more diesel. It's 
It looks like it's got like a pre-runner style bumper. That's a sharp truck. I'm not gonna lie, starting at 20 grand, that's not with 20 grand. Yeah, that's 50. Okay, that's that seems right. That's a that's a fifty thousand dollar truck. Much much more reasonable for something like that, I guess. All right, here we go. Let's go see the Corvette. This poor girl's been doing this for a week. And she's probably getting sick of it. All right, let's see. This is the ZR1. There it is. The ZR1. Anyone heard about the fastest reacting suspension in the world? What's the name? Let's see, 335s in the rear, 755 horsepower, 715 pounds of the torque, 6.2 liter supercharged. Okay. Not bad. I'm going to sneak around all these people here and try to get you guys a view of the coupe. I would love to know. From the Corvette so program. she clearly knows her product there. knowledge, we want to make sure when you visit uh, but I would the love to know if she's on one of those track. people that just remembers sure statistics or the, like does she taxes. actually so like drive cars because there's people that sound but and know information like she clearly knows her stuff but you can know stuff and not care about it right these are some big breaks we're going to give you performance data recorder so you have a built in-house camera recorder right over here in the windshield and it records everything that you do on the track oh good and that camera will be out of date so in two you weeks. Okay, so you've got. Or if you're a show off, I know everybody loves social media. There we you go. Love this feature. You can Big old brakes. Gotta to love that. ZR1. Okay. Well. Because it has 4G LTE wireless internet. Oh boy. So the ZR1 has 4G LTE wireless internet. That's gonna go away in four years. As is the camera that's gonna be out of date within the next few years that's mounted in the car. So. Typical, excuse me, typical GM just kind of throwing stuff in to try and <laughs> try and make people get excited about technology, but it gets out of date in like no time at all. Oh, this is sweet. All right, check this out. I'm headed over to Toyota ZR1 Badass. That's really all I saw that I cared from Chevy besides the little Colorado diesel. All right. So, looks like Toyota's working with the Olympics. Hoorah. So this is, I think... Is, it, is this like the fastest SUV in the world? I remember seeing this thing a while ago. Once again, folks, my name is Jason. It did like 200 miles an hour or something. Yeah, the Land Speed Cruiser. <laughs> this thing is badass. Let's see, trying to find my numbers here. The 5.73 UR, it's based on that. I'm pretty confident it's not. 58 pounds of boost. Is there a power number anywhere, do you see? Jesus. All right, well, no wonder it set a speed record. It's 2,000 horsepower, but there you go. You have the, uh, the land speed cruiser. It's really cool. It's dropped all the way down. you got this cool little uh, diffuser at the back. I mean, this thing is, is righteous. That's pretty fucking cool. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, no sweat. All right, so anyway, there you go. The Land Speed Cruiser, that thing is really, really badass. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more of a close-up. That set the record, uh, I'm pretty sure it set the record for fastest SUV in the world. Top speed of 220 miles an hour. That's insane. That's insane. 220 miles an hour, 58 pounds of boost. Good God. On a V8, 2,000 horsepower, that thing is just, all right. Yeah, color me impressed. That's, uh, that's actually really cool. Oh, they got some chameleon paint on this thing, whatever's next to uh, the Land Speed Cruiser. They got the color changing paint here. I'm going to try and move slow so you can see it. Oh, that's cool. I always like chameleon paint. All right, so we've got some fun stuff here. We've got a CHR. Toyota's got a big booth, so this is going to take me a little bit. The CHR, which I think they're actually, I've heard talk of them doing a series with, which would be pretty awesome. The R-Tuned. Uh, testament how far the CHR could go in a track environment. 2.4 liter, blah, blah, blah. It's just a kid roaming around. <laughs> yeah, jump on in there, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. 
There's too many people in this world. <laughs> Control your little children. Anyway, looking on, I think we've got, what is this? Am I looking at a camera here? It looks like a camera. XSE. Sweet. That's kind of a cool looking one. What's special about this one? Oh, it has exhaust and brake pads. That's a nice feature. Are you aware that Toyotas come with brake pads? Now? All right. Well, let's make our way. Let's make our way through the Toyota booth here. Uh oh, that's not flat, but it looks flat. <laughs> All right. So let's see. What do we got here? This is something that I've been seeing on social media quite a bit. I don't know anything about it. Kind of reminds me of like a new Forerunner, but I have no idea what it is. Oh, we got a sign over here. Let's see. The FTAC concept. Future Toyota Adventure concept. So it's like the... <laughs> yes, it's the Tercel four-wheel drive. There it is. See, I told you. It's a Tercel four-wheel drive. You were right. It's here. There it is in the flesh. The Tercel four-wheel drive. <laughs> oh, that shit's funny. Anyway... So it's actually kind of cool looking. I'd love to see inside of the thing, but uh, unfortunately that's probably not going to happen. It's got a beautiful looking front end. I wouldn't be uh, upset if they made that. So anyway, there you go. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with it, but here you got, you know, torque vectoring, yada, yada, blah, blah. Oh, look, that. All right. So we have a NASCAR drivetrain, which is pretty wild. That setup right there is probably not even... Oh, sweet, it's a cutaway. Check that out. Pretty impressive. Multi-pass radiator. Man, that's a wild. Oh, furniture row. Denver mattress. Not bad. That's where I grew up. I know those guys. <laughs> well, the actual guys, not the the guy sitting in the car there. So anyway, uh, let's see, they've got, I'm just gonna gloss over the pre eye. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys are cool with that. This looks like the new Avalon? The new Camry? Is that the Camry? I don't know what that is, That's a, it says Camry. <laughs> that looks like it might be a new Camry. That feels like a big Camry, holy hell, it looks giant. Yeah, that's, that's big for a Camry. Oh, the Camry. That is huge. It's bigger than the old Avalon. Wow. Well, anyway, the new Camry's big. Okay. Let's see, they have more small cars that are really economical and probably pretty reliable, but really un unexciting. Um, so, one thing that I've noticed over the years is you can really sum up a brand pretty well with their slogan, right? So, Toyota. They have it emblazoned on the wall over there. Let's go places, right? I think that's awesome, but it really kind of sums up their thing. It's like, well, let's get there. Let's get to wherever we're going, but let's do it and reliably, not necessarily excitingly or with anything in particular in mind. Just let's, let's do it, and they do it really well. They make kind of, for the most part, boring cars. But I will say, I think, the only thing that uh, is really exciting me from Toyota right now, other than, you know, their custom vehicles over there were kind of cool, but I like the, uh, I did Hotel Tacoma last year, and it is actually a pretty neat little truck. Um, pretty capable, we had a lot of fun with it. You know, it's a Toyota, so it's gonna be pretty damn reliable. It's gonna run until the end of the earth. You know, we bounced the hell out of that thing in the dunes. I was with Drew Bazanson, um, bouncing the hell out of it, and then, Shama the Superman, uh, the surfer and the, and the BMX guy, and we were bouncing around through the dunes having a lot of fun in those things and never had an issue with them. They were great, so I gotta admit, I, I do like the Tacomas. I think they're a, a good truck. And then the Tundra, I'll just say it now, Toyota, until you make a Tundra with a diesel and a dually option, I don't care. Come on, it's an awesome truck. I wish the American manufacturers would pay attention. I think the interior is really straightforward, is, is a beautiful interior, but I still don't care. You gotta give me something that I'm excited about. You gotta give me something I want, something I'll actually use. All right, moving on to VW. You'll notice there are no TDI signs anywhere, which is kind of a thing for them right now. They're really focusing on gas because of course, 
the whole diesel gate thing. All right, so moving on here. Let me check what time it is. 12.42, so I gotta start heading back. So we've got a couple concepts here. I don't even know what this is. This looks like one of those self-driving cars. There's no steering wheel. <laughs> the concept ID. And of course, a little throwback for the hippie in all of us with the, the spinning Buddha on the dashboard. <laughs> spinning gnome? I don't know what that's supposed to be. Well, there you have it. <laughs> A Westie for the 21st century. The electric golf. It's like they're, they're really getting after that self driving thing. That seems to be popular. Oh, and look, a plug in hybrid. <laughs> so, so, yep, there you have it. Volkswagen. We'll get to Subaru here in a second. Mazda. All right, that's right. I had something I needed to go see over at the Mazda booth. The RX9 concept. Did they bring it? That looks like it might be something special over there. Let's go there. I see the regular Mazdas. I see their normal stuff, whatever, but that, that's where we're going. All right, here we go. What do we have? 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 Look at that. I like that third brake light. Okay. That is an interesting option for a mirror, a little camera. <laughs> Look at this. I'm liking that. What's funny? Look at all these people checking out the CX-5. I could care less. Look at that. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's gorgeous. All right. All right. I'm on board with that. Levi, you like the headlights, dude. There's some incredible detail in those things. Ooh, love the wheels. I don't even know what this thing is, but it is stunning. By the way, this is definitely not the RX-9, because I'm pretty sure, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say definitely, but look at those taillights. That is sweet. There's so much detail in those things. Yeah, it is really long. Um, I mean, that's, there's, two doors, so it's definitely a big car, and it's right-hand drive, so I, I don't think that's going to be, Jesus, the back brakes are as big as the front, look at that, look at the back brakes, they're freaking huge, it's got dual calipers on the rear, are you kidding me? I know there's no e-brake in there, that's probably just for the parking brake, the electric parking brake, I would assume, but yeah, look at those rotors, good God. 21-inch wheels. I bet those are like 17-inch rotors. That's absurd. All right. Well, that was Mazda. <laughs> I just, uh, this another CX-9. Kind of don't really care. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Well, there's a little Miata RF, whatever that thing is. I got something over in the corner. It just looks like a regular Miata there, the Spec 3. Here we go. That's kind of... It's kind of neat little Targa Top Miata. I don't know that I really care about it. Oh, here we go. That's pretty cool, too. Oh, boy. So there you go. Another, another cutaway. But here's what we're really looking for. Look at that. Yeah. Wow, that's gorgeous. Love it. Do we have anything on the screen? No, we do not. Well... Gonna send it. <laughs> so the Global Cup race car you have there, which is pretty neat. I'd love to try one of those things. This cutaway they did is pretty badass, actually. So you can see the uh, the race heritage side and then the street side. It's the same thing, right? You got the cage all cut away. That's some cool fabrication right there, just to see the difference between the two. That's really neat. Look at that. That's cool. Factory on one side, race on the other. That is dope. All right, well, okay. Color me impressed. Mazda did some cool shit. They might not be making a whole lot of cool stuff other than the Mazda, or the Miata, I should say, but uh, yeah, their booth is pretty neat. All right, let's see. Oh, let's go see Subaru, shall we? I, yeah, let's go see Subaru. <laughs> okay. Many of you may know I'm not a huge fan of Subaru, but we're going to go through the Subaru anyway. They just released their new seven-passenger vehicle because why not? Everybody else is doing it, so we should too. So, there you have a seven-passenger Subaru. It's, uh, it's a real thing. And um, I don't care. 
I really don't. Uh, yeah, surprisingly enough, that Subaru, that legendary all-wheel drive system, man. Uh, so they have this here. Where they just mounted the, the video that they did with Higgins, I think. And uh, they mounted the car up in a fake bobsled, so that's kind of cool. Which I think is funny, by the way, because it's supposed to be, I'm supposed to be impressed at that video. But look at all the damage that car took. Like, that car, that car got fucked up. And I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be impressed at the talent took for that video. Look, he's going to drive down that, <laughs> drive down the bobfish run. And by the way, dirt fish is like all over this stuff, but yeah, watch this. And he's going to bounce off the walls the whole way down. If you haven't seen this already, you'll see, yeah, see? <laughs> this was such a janky project. Look at that. He's smashing into everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, I'm supposed to be impressed that he smashed that car all the way down a frickin' bobsled run. I'm not saying I could have done better, by the way, but that was, that's kind of silly, I think. And, uh, all right, let's go see what else do we got. Oh, look, we got a BRZ. Is this an STI yet? Is it a BRZ STI? Do I care about this yet? The BRZ TS, tuned by STI. Let's see this. Represents further lightweight sports car, blah, 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 carbon fiber, etc., etc. Only 500 units. Is there a turbo on it? No, there's no turbo on it. Don't care. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Subaru. Same old shit from the same old company. Look, a WRX. That's probably got just as much power as their flagship. The STI, the Type RA. What do we got? Oh, 310 horsepower? No way. It's like 10 more than they've had for 10 years. Limited to 500 individually numbered units, carbon fiber roof, yada yada blah blah, 19 inch rims. Okay, so there you go, that's what you get. You get a special model for the RA, and uh, it has 10 more horsepower than the regular one. So, if you're loving your Subaru, you can thank them for making the same car for 25 years and the same motor for about 30. <laughs> so anyway, nothing really exciting from Subaru. They did release a new uh, seven-seater Ascent, I think is what they're calling it. Um, but, you know, beyond that, nothing really that crazy. So there's the Subaru booth. And Hyundai, uh, we can make a quick pass through. We've got Land Rover and Jaguar next to us. Let's see what we have over here in the Hyundai booth. All right. So, what are we seeing here? We're seeing product specialists. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that is. Unfortunately, I'm not really going to stick around the Hyundai booth. I don't see anything racy or exciting except for the blue and the green thing. And I kind of don't really care about, oh, I don't want to walk through that. I kind of don't really care. Uh, you gotta do something that excites me. I think the Genesis was kind of neat for a while, but then they just started a new brand called Genesis that has nothing to do with performance and it's everything to do with, with luxury, so. Here is Land Rover. They've got the Discovery there. They've got, you know, their, oh, the Evoke or whatever the heck it is that you know, has, a, has no roof. That's what they're showing on the screen up there right now, so. Yeah, the Range Rover Evoque with no roof. It's kind of neat, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of don't really care. I mean, it's probably going to be decent off-road. Land Rover, you got a, a Range Rover. Oh, look, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, every company has one. All right, so moving on. And... I don't know if you guys saw that, but she had killer bangs. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Let's make our way over to Jaguar, well, shall we? Oh, there we go. Jaguar, the E-Trophy. Okay, so Jaguar brought... Wow. Cool with this. So Jaguar brought their Formula E car, which, for those of you that don't know, the Formula E is just uh, an electric Formula One series, uh, which... Let's be honest, no one cares about it, uh, but it is kind of cool. And they also brought like their little electric, evidently Jaguar's big into the electric market now, so 
Oh, and um, if you guys can believe it, there's an electric Jaguar, <laughs> something electric. All right, this is one of the ones I really did care about, the Tesla booth. All right, let's see it. So we've got the Model 3 on display. They were actually able to make one, if you can believe that. It is a good looking car, no questions asked. People crowded around it. Base price, price as configured, 60 grand. So it's got the long range battery, the premium upgrades, yada yada, blah blah. It's a nice looking car. Thanks, man. I like how they have just like a house built. They've got the power wall here, that's kind of cool. And uh, everything's fake grass. <laughs> Here's the booth. The Tesla booth. Oh, Genesis. Genesis actually does make some cool stuff, but I don't really care about uh, luxury cars. There's the Model X with the gull wing doors. Those are pretty awesome. I have to admit, I, I wouldn't mind one of those things. And then, of course, you have the Model S, which everybody knows and most people love. Um, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a Tesla, you know? Everybody knows it's... Everybody knows it. It's a Tesla. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time there. Back to Audi. We made it. And, of course, the TTRS. I want to see how much power the TTRS has, actually. Oh, look, it's a 12-volt battery. That's fantastic. Overview. Okay, 65 grand. Don't care about that. Let's go back to full specs. Uh, power. Power, 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 power. 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 <laughs> there we go. Uh, 2.5 liter engine, 400 horsepower out of a 2.5 liter. Nice. Okay. 174 mile an hour top speed. So I bet that thing's pretty fun, actually. So not bad. There you have it. That was the 2017 Los Angeles Auto Show. And uh, I'm going to head back over to help out the guys and get rolling on some more Mercedes-Benz Iron Shekel action. So... I uh, hope you guys are having an awesome day. Thanks for tuning in if you were here. Thanks for watching if you weren't. Uh, leave a like and a comment. Tell me what the favorite, your favorite thing that you saw was. Let me know. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hey, look, there's a sign for my thing. Yeah, I guess we need to go that way. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You have a good one, too. And we will catch you guys later. Peace.